Witajcie wszyscy! Welcome back to another episode of Combinator. This one will actually not be computer based at all. What I'm going to be doing is... Uh, well, I got, a, I got an e-bike for free and it came in condition. So it uh, needed a bit of work. The batteries, fortunately for myself, were already being uh, swapped out by the original owner. So the original battery is four 12 volt cells at 12 volts, well 13 really, giving it a total of 52 volts. It connects to the e-bike e by a standard power connector like a kettle plug. So I want to drive this thing into Toronto and I don't know if there's going to be enough juice in here. So I made my own battery, a secondary one, out of eight UPS batteries of this type. So we'll go through the science of how I got 52 volts out of 8 batteries, whereas this can do it out of 4. But for the time being, I just wanted to introduce the box I made out of MDF here. And it's uh, it's got a carrying strap. Uh, it's really not for carrying, but it's for uh, just you know, pulling it out of the compartment. I actually haven't fitted it into the machine yet. But, uh, you know, we'll have a look at that. So, let's go see that. And now, the unveiling. All right, there's the EcoPad in all its glory. So, a few things I've already done to it. Uh, these leaf wires here prevented a good connection from keeping uh, the vehicle in motion, so I had to rewire some of that. Uh, these pedals were removed, straightened, and put on properly, because they were like out of alignment, like this one was at a 45 degree angle, whereas this one was at like a 90 degree angle. So I don't, you, you couldn't even pedal like that. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I also took them off, straightened them because they were bent in, cleaned them up. I'm going to be painting that kickstand down there, just giving it a general cleanup. Uh, another thing that didn't work in the back were the, uh, the stop and turning signal lights. So I'll talk a little bit more about those later, but they have been converted to LEDs. Uh, this is sun bleached. I'm going to have to address this clear coat issue by sanding it and painting it down. Uh, this I'm actually going to take it apart later on and try to retro bright it. In any case, uh, this battery connecting into there through this kettle plug here. So like, I've never tried this before, so this would be the first time, uh, well the first test. I know it will not fit in completely because I have to knock this, this brace out here, this plastic, uh, I don't know, embossment, whatever you want to call it. So just take a grinder to that and cut it out. It's not structural. It guides the other battery back in, but the other battery is uh, fit directly, like like right into this. The the replacement battery, as you'll see, just goes right in here, so it leaves a space on the side here. I didn't feel like cutting the MDF out, and it's just too much of a hassle. Uh, plus, it would have made for uh, very loose batteries, whereas these are very tight, tightly packed in here. So, yeah, let's put it in. So I'm out here on the balcony with the e-bike. Uh, brought the battery over. Let's uh, plug it in and see how it works. So this will be the first time fitting this. Uh, actually, just plug it in first. So it's just a standard PC power connector kettle plug. All right. So that's in. Smoke test. So, looks like it is on. Let's uh, test everything out, the turning signal. That one works. That one works. Brake light. Can't tell from here, but it probably works. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, headlights. High beams. Yeah, alright. Now, let's see if it actually has enough power to spin the wheel. Thirty five kilometers per hour. Alright, now, will it actually fit in here? Uh, so I left some room for the wires and I left room for the strap to be tucked away on, on the side there. So let's, uh, let's try. I'm 
in there too hard because uh, I know that I have to clear that uh, that little clip in the front there. I'm going to take a Dremel to it or something and cut it out. Uh, but for the time being, I mean, I could roll around like this for test purposes. So I tuck the strap away either on this side or the other side. And what normally would happen is when the battery's flush, like the original battery, you put this I'm going to decrease that. Uh, this motor oil stained rubber cover, rubber mat, over top of this. It sits nice and flush. Uh, and yeah, so you don't bump into it or anything like that. But yeah, I think I'm going to just take it to the to the liquor store and back. Uh, 800 meters both ways should be a decent test. Uh, the next best thing to do is sorry. The next thing to do after that is to drain this battery completely and the original battery, and I'll get into that in uh, another part. But for now, appropriately with an e-bike, off to the liquor store. Before we set off anywhere though, let's have a look at what I've actually done. So according to the manufacturer's own website, the stock batteries have a 20 ampere hour capacity. The UPS batteries are only rated at 7 ampere hours. However, they are connected in parallel, so that the current load doubles to 14 ampere hours, or about 3 quarters of the available capacity of the OEM battery. The distance able to be traveled according to the manufacturer is 60 to 70 kilometers, and that is indeed what the previous owner has confirmed. So 70% of that is about 42 to 50 kilometers. In theory, the spare battery alone could be sufficient. So here is a circuit of how the batteries are connected. On the top is the OEM connection using four 12 volt cells in series. The bottom shows my configuration using eight 12 volt cells. A quick recap of Electronics 101 states that the batteries in series add their voltages, keeping the amperage the same, and batteries in parallel increase the current rating while keeping the voltage the same. In my design, I've done both. Put four cells in series to give me 52 volts, just like the OEM battery, and then added another bank at the same configuration in parallel to double my effective capacity. Now, the new battery compartment weighs just a pound less, but some of that can be attributed to the wooden materials used to make it. The base is a solid 5 8 thick piece of plywood with 1 8 or 1 16 or whatever 5 millimeter equates to in freedom units. The OEM battery case is very light and it's made out of molded plastic. So, some of the weight differences might be attributed to the materials there. For the connector, I used a monitor pass-through power cable and wired it in the same way as the OEM battery. I also used an inline ATO 30 amp fuse, basically the same way as the OEM one. To fit the batteries inside the box, I first measured the OEM battery container at the thinnest point widthwise, then the overall height and length. When the batteries were stacked upright and on their side, they're sealed lead acid batteries, and often they're upside down in UPSs, combined with a thick wooden base, they match the height of the compartment. I had to build little wooden spacers to get the batteries to sit flush on top of each other and hot glue them to the battery casing so they don't slide around. This provided passages for the mini cables that would pass between the batteries as well as the heavier gauge power outlet. I then added the sidewalls made out of MDF. Every little bit of space had to be taken into account. I mirrored the left side of the battery layout to on the right, routed all my wires, which were custom cut from a heavy duty extension cable with crimp mounted connectors and finally connected the two series banks together in parallel out through a hole in the front of the compartment that first went through a fuse. To keep the batteries from moving around and to help keep the wiring in place, a small MDF rectangular column was screwed in from the bottom. Grooves were notched in for the wiring. Finally, a plexiglass sheet was added to the top, secured in the middle by two screws and three Velcro strips out of the edges of the batteries. This way, the operator can see the condition of the fuse without having to take the top cover off. To a successful trip. Nastrovia. Successful being it made it there and back. Uh, so the first 200 meters were fine. The both of the engine phases, motor phases worked like the first initial start, and then I guess it up ramps the voltage or something, gives you a second kick, no problem. Voltage was at 51.5, whereas the, well, the stock batteries were 52. So yeah, no problem, up the hills, down the hills, then on the way back, 10 kilometers per hour was the max. I would not be able to make it up the hills without this. Uh, and by using these more than I've ever used them before on this uh, e-bike, I can tell you that these assist this, and not this assist these. There's no way that you can just use this without a battery. It's Your leg's not in the fully extended position when you're pedaling. Uh, there's a lot of weight behind it. It's, it's, it's awful. But 
Uh, mission accomplished, the batteries are drained. Now, now I will have to put the stock battery back in, drain that one, and parallel charge the two. I'll get into that a bit later, why that has to happen. Uh, and then we'll do a proper rundown test on these and see how good they really are, because, like I said, they're out of a UPS that has been in service for years. And while the batteries each measure 13.5 volts, 13.3 13.5 individually, that does not tell me how much load they can, you know, uh, push out. These are for, for servers and keeping them up. Not exactly for, you know, powering e-bikes, but they are lead acid. Anyways, we'll see how that goes. So for now, swap the battery to the stock one. Go for many more journeys. And now that we're back, that'll be all for part one. Ciao, Kidrogi.